Come and get started on a new mission, mission. a new direction, direction, a new intention. intention. Welcome to 5.8G Alive at Connections 50 Plus. I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite. And I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, catering to all your prospects in the third act of life. Economic well-being, well-being. social gratification, gratification. personal fulfillment. fulfillment. Join us on Wednesday at 6 p.m. on Connections 50 Plus Facebook page, YouTube channel, and on Gael the Caribbean. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Connections 50 Plus 5.8G Alive. And everyone in the Caribbean, I hope you all are doing great. I am Jennifer Gibbons Joseph, one of the co creators of Connections 50 Plus. And as usual, with me is my colleague. Hi, I am Terry Ann Joseph Brathwaite, the other co creator. How is everyone doing? And Trinidad, how are you handling the lockdown? Yes, we are in lockdown. <laughs> and Jennifer, we are. We are dealing with something that is so atypical for Trinidadians. You're locked down on a public holiday. On yes. Monday, we were locked down for the curfew 19 hours. And tomorrow it's the next oh, lockdown. But we will see. We we are we are getting yeah. there. The vaccines are coming and we will be fine show today. We, yes, have, a we have a pack show and we have guests on today. Yes. Um we're going to be starting with the dollar savvy segment mm-hmm. and with a guest, and then we are moving on to being in tune and then into community. Okay. And in that seg- segment, we also will have a guest. So a lot to look forward to, Terry Ann. All right. So without much further ado, let's head to the Indala Savi. So join me with my guest, Indala Savi, and we will be chatting on balancing your personal and family financial future. So listen up. And I have here with me... Yolan and Yolan Marcel. I want to introduce Yolan. Yolan is a very good friend of my own. And in addition to that, Yolan is a woman of God, yes. a mother, very great friend, a family person, an accountant, not yet retired. <laughs> so I would be asking Yolan to share with us about her journey. Um, because as I said, We at 50 Plus would have gone through a lot of um, financial setbacks or some sort of distress at some stage. And the decisions you would have made is what would have brought you to where you are today. And I spoke about decision making, how important it is for us to make decisions, why we should have faith in what we are doing. Because if you want a positive outcome, of course, you have to have a positive mindset. So I would be just asking Yolan to share with us about her journey, because I'm aware, Yolan, that you experienced two, I would say, serious financial setbacks, and I always admire how you, I'm privileged to know her business, (laughs) you know, (laughs) so I always admire how Yolan came out of it, and the example for us, uh, you know, Yolan is still in the workplace, and I must say, I, as I mentioned before, admire her achievement of being a mother, friend, you know, giving back to society, etc. So Yolan, um, could you just share with us your, your first, I would say, big financial setback, and I'm using, I would like you to share, because we are dealing with the third act stage, you know, persons mm-hmm. from 50 plus, yeah. And I know, you know, I'm aware that your first setback really started just prior to age 50. Yeah. So that yeah. is really a, a, a critical time, you know, okay. going on to the third act stage. Could you yeah. share with us, you, you know, that experience, what you experienced? Well, um, at that point in time, my, simply put, my marriage failed. Okay. And <laughs> my marriage failed. And you know, for anyone who has been in a two-income home understands the enormity of moving from a two-income home to a one-income home. And um, when you would think that you have started your preparation, you did all the things the financial advisors would have told you about, 
you know, like yourself <laughs> at the time, yes. you know, you, you had your, your annuities, you were saving a particular portion of your salary every month and whatnot. But still, um, just pre-50s, you still would not have come out of major, major debts. So you're, yeah. still, you're still running close to month to month. And losing one month is one person's income for the running of a home is a difficult thing. Oh, definitely. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a difficult thing. However, um, as you would know, Jennifer, my faith is in God. Yes. And I cannot do this interview without talking about the fact that God is my strength. I mean, God. Yeah, I can relate. Mm -hmm. Yeah, God was then and is now my everything. So um, I just had to hold on to God. But one of the things I would like to share with people is that in any setback you have, you must have at least one, one person with whom you can talk. Because fear and isolation, those two things are the enemies. Because it plays havoc with your mind. And let me stop right there, Yolan. Those two things are what is happening right now, yes. affecting people, people. fear yes. and isolation. And yes. I am happy you brought that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, fear and isolation. So over the time, you know, I, I would have formed good relationships and I was able to speak to, you know, to someone, a good friend, to kind of hold me, um, and to let me know that, you know, it's not my fault because one of the things is that you beat up on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. I and mean, the first thing you have to do is to learn to forgive yourself because you're like, where did I go wrong? How this is, mm -hmm. and then you could start digging deep down, talking with people and pulling yourself out of it. And of course your um, priorities will have to change in yeah. terms of your spending habits and stuff like that. You have to sit down and work things out into what you could do now, what you could get rid of. My priority was not losing my home. Okay, all right. How did you manage that? How did I manage that? I reprioritize, as I said. So certain things I did without. I used to travel a lot. So mm -hmm. you, you just have to make a list and focus and determine what is now important. My, my son was about to go into university and, you know, you just have to say, well, okay, you have to make sure that things are stable, you have books, you have to prepare for all the eventualities where he was concerned, you know, so I just um, stayed away from a lot of things. I love entertainment. I stayed away from that. I got rid of cable. Yeah. <laughs> television. Um, I got rid of that. I mean, certain things just had to stop. I like to dress. I not well, that I know I didn't get rid of your wardrobe. <laughs> no, not that I stopped dressing, uh, but in terms of your priorities change. That's basically yes. basically it. And lots of prayer, lots of prayer and intercession. Then lots of yeah. prayer. Because you and I know too, you know, you're an accountant. Yes. So I guess that would have also given you that advantage in being comfortable to handle, you know, a financial situation. Yes, but however, what, Jennifer, um, you feel, um, sorry to interrupt you. Um, part of it, when that happens to you at that time, knowing my profession, you sort of feel ashamed. Yes. Because yes. you have planned for all eventualities. Eh? So mm -hmm. when these things happen to you and you see your resources uh, being drawn down, your savings being depleted. You're like, well, did I do enough? I mean, I spoke with many people and told, told them how they should plan themselves. And there yes. I was in this situation, like, okay, you know, did you, you know, you got yourself educated as your mommy would have said. So oh, yes. But, mm -hmm. <laughs> but like, like you really needed a money. Yes. <laughs> And this happened. Now, Yolanda, yeah. at this time also, and you were mentioning situations that, although it was as a result of, of your marriage, um, not, you know, separating. Mm -hmm. But now during this pandemic, again, mm -hmm. that is that a fear of, um, the fear many people are afraid of that they can lose their homes. 
Yes. Yes. You know, and, and yes. have to put things in place right. to, to at least secure that and not lose your homes. And from right. what you're saying, it starts with your mind. They have to be very positive. Yes, you must and, be very positive. And, and give up a lot. Look at, the, um, look at the things that you spend money on, even though it may seem very small, something like a cable, you, you, you know, cutting down travel, etc. <sighs> But when you total all these expenses, it's a big cost. Yes, it's a big you know? cost. So yes. really and truly, they need to look at their expenses yes. and, you know, reduce or give up some of the things so they will yes. have some savings, you yes. know, yes. and yes. be able to, to contribute towards yes. their mortgage. Yes. Well, on what you said there about mm -hmm. mortgage and fear of losing your mortgage that is a oh, real yeah, yeah. yeah losing your home yeah yeah that is really one of the main fears of people right now who has a mortgage yeah and they may be thinking oh gosh they hope that that doesn't happen to them but what you could look at what i would advise and take your advice is that um i would recommend to those out there, our followers, who may be, you know, fearful right now about not being able to maintain their mortgage or about losing their homes, is that from now, don't wait. Don't wait. Yeah. Start looking at what you can cut back on and, yeah. you know, look at, because you would know what is your installment every month. So look at ways that you may be able, things that you could cut back on so you can at least be able you know, to ride through this time. Yeah. You know, and one of the things, Jennifer, that worked for me is uh, you have to be pre and preemptive. Approach your mortgage company. Yes. Yes. Don't be afraid. You see, because the fear is paralyzing. Mm -hmm. And, and you, do, you don't know what to do and you don't want to take calls. You don't know if they're calling right. about the debt or anything like that. Approach them. And when yeah. I approached them, the guy was very, very amiable. So you understand? So that's it's great. Very, very, very amazing. So Yolan, let me let me chat now. I'll like ask you about your your second, I will say, major financial setback. And that would have been when you lost your job. You know, you want to share how you dealt with, with that and having a family to still support at, at that time. So um yes, and when you again at the same time, having gone through the first setback. And mm -hmm. then, so your funds are dwindling and all of that, and then you lose your job. Um, yeah. And after 50, it's a time to know, it's a struggle to reinvent yourself. You understand? Mm -hmm. Because yes. your view of yourself would have been that you will work until you're 60, yes. you retire, you will get your, your annuity, your pension, and you will get your national insurance, and life will be smooth and hunky-dory. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, <laughs> just after 60, 50, sorry, you lose your job and all of those prepackaged plans mm -hmm. go awry, you know? So you have to reinvent yourself. You have to talk to yourself. I mean, again, it's my spirituality that helped me. And again, having some one person with whom I can speak, yeah. um, who told me, you know, it's not your fault, you know? Because yeah. you could beat up on yourself and go into a state of depression and if you go into a state of depression and you can't pull yourself out, you, you become inactive as with yeah. as what is happening with some people during this pandemic. Yeah. They, they start to worry. They go into a state of depression. They go down and they can't seem to pull themselves out, you know? So you have to talk to yourself and think positively. Um, surround yourself with people who would lift you up. Don't yeah. surround yourself with naysayers and girl, imagine that. No, no. Surround yourself with positive people, positive talk, thoughts, and just attempt to reinvent yourself. Find something new. Take walks. Go to the beach. You get, you know, try meditation where you'll be able to download. Pray so that you could hear, well, for me, hear Holy Spirit speaking and try to guide you so that you don't do things. Because the worst thing to do is to make a decision in haste. All right. I you learn. Mm -hmm. I know you have, how did that, and during the period that you, um, that period it weren't working, you know, mm -hmm. I know eventually you were able to be employed again, mm -hmm. but during that period, how did it affect 
your family, you know? Well, um, they were um, very affected in the sense that because it was a sense of not being so secure, no. I tried to buffer them mm -hmm. by not sharing too much, you know, okay. in terms of my fears. Um, but I, I believe some of it was transmitted from my vibes or body. I don't know how you call it. Um, to sort of like, is it that we're poor now and we have to be on the street? Is it that, ah. you know, you know, things like that. But thank God for extended family support. Okay. Again, that is an important thing and not being ashamed. Don't oh. be afraid to share. Don't be ashamed to take help because you know, that was one of my things. I didn't know how to receive. Ah, okay. I didn't know how to receive because I was always giving because I was always in a position where I could have helped. And now I was on the receiving side and that is a bit humbling. Okay. You, you understand um, that you now have to have a hand outstretched, you know, mm -hmm. because I didn't work for two years. Wow. I didn't work for two years. And in those two years, I saw all of my savings or everything that you planned for just deplete, you know, yeah. but with planning and speaking and praying and doing things, you know, taking on projects, little projects, private projects, you know, where, um, you didn't see yourself before, you know, being a companion, a, a company. I did that with someone. They wanted someone to go with them to a conference. Yeah. Because, yeah, they didn't want to go to this conference alone. And they asked if I would be willing to travel with them. And I saw it as a blessing from God, no strings attached. And I traveled and I got income and, you know. Yeah. And I was able to pay some bills. So, I mean, you just reinvent yourself. That's not where I saw myself. When I did accounting, I didn't see myself being a traveling companion. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Yolanda, again, you said something about, you know, releasing that shame. Yes. And that is something, again, that is important. And it is really, you know, connected with the financial situation. Yes. You know, when you release that shame, then you can decide and you open up avenues, yeah, you know, yeah. for things that you can do that you may have never thought that you would do before. Never but concerned. what you're focusing on is not the prestige of, of the job, it's not at, at the level, but actually what income you can get, That's what right, money right. you can get from it, and knowing yeah. that it will only be, it's for a time. It's for a time. And nothing right. is wrong. It's, it's, as we say, it's honest work. Yes. You know, yes. nothing yes. is wrong with that. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, that is, and that is part, you see, what happens is that society, the socialization, mm -hmm. which we go through as we grow from childhood to adulthood, you know, you do this yeah. exam, you pass, you'll get a good job, you think, you know, and you go through those stages and then life throws you a curveball. And um, what you were socialized to think of, of as acceptable you realize um, you have to do something else. Yes. You, you understand? You have mm -hmm. to do something else um, because that's not where you saw yourself. But for you to live and to be able to provide for your loved ones, you have to just not look at the old social norms. Great. Well, you learn again our, our time <laughs> is limited. But I yes. want to thank you and really and truly what you did here um, what you shared with us is proof that, that you see decision making yes. and having faith, yes. having faith in, in, in not just faith in God, yes, but also faith in yourself. Self. That's right. You know, yes. and your ability and keep that, that goal, you kept your goal. I mean, you have your family to see about. You know, you want to be, you know, you have to be employed. You still have your goals of, of yes. And, and I must add for those, Yolan loves to travel. And yes. even giving up that, um, yes. knowing that she didn't have enough money to travel. 
Hey, she was blessed with someone who wanted a travel companion. Travel. Yes, and yes, for yes. me, that is sending out that positive energy outside. Yes. When you send that positive energy, you get rewards in different ways. I, I agree with you. That's the way you know? Yeah. And you will continue, you'll continue to be rewarded you know, because of all the good you are doing and sending out all the positive vibes. Thank so you so much. I, I want to thank you so much for joining us on this Dollar Savvy segment for sharing your stories and really leaving some golden nuggets with the audience. And I am sure many of you listening out there would have take, you know, taken from this chat uh, some of the nuggets that you can use yourself. Okay, so Yolan, be thank blessed, you. stay right. safe. Stay healthy. You, too. you know, this you is too. a time that we have to be very careful outside. It. Yes. Thank you. All okay. right. Bye. So okay, bye, bye for now. Bye okay. Bye. Jennifer. Jennifer, that was a very, very, very relevant issue of how someone yeah. transitioned with their finances. That Definitely. that is important. Mm -hmm. It is, and you know, especially the 50 plus cohort. So just prior to getting on to that, to that stage, to know how do you, you know, manage that situation. And now that she got onto that stage, other situation, you know, but definitely what um, Yulon shared with us, you know, are there, those are tips that could help anybody you know, transition from one stage into the other in spite of the financial challenges. Great, fantastic, Jennifer. That was a great, a great segment. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So Tara, so we're gonna be moving in into being in tune, which is your segment. But before that, I would like you listeners, I mean, we have this Essentials Toolkit program that is fantastic. So I want you to listen. We're going to play that clip for you now and you will just drop us a line and let us know what you think about it. For all you 50 plus people looking for a one-stop shop equipped with dividends to guarantee personal fulfillment, social gratification and economic well-being, well, we at Connections 50 Plus have a state-of-the-art toolkit especially for you. This is no gimmick. It is an essential toolkit chock full of customized online assessments created by experts to help you greatly improve your life chances. It is the Connections 50 Plus 5.8G Essentials Toolkit. Gain peace of mind, lead an enjoyable lifestyle, plan your future, and make your dreams a reality. For without dreaming, we lose the excitement of possibilities. Dreaming is indeed a form of planning. Connections 50 plus 5.8G Essentials Toolkit allows you to dream. Seize this opportunity now. Call us at 868-685-8834 or 868-682-9202 or connect with us at connections50plus.com. Dreams are but a shadow of our potential. Let's make our dreams a reality. Jennifer, our services are there for everyone to help the transition. Viewers, I hope you all are realizing all of our nice ads. Keep track of them. You will know our services. <laughs> so now it's the next segment, Jennifer. And that segment is... Being in tune. Hello. Hello once again. And we're into our second segment, which is being in tune. And we have been chatting about how do we stay in tune? You know, an instrument has to be tuned. Last week, we spoke to Diane Maslin about how we use our space to make sure that we're in tune. And from your comments, many of you love that Zen appreciation. Now, Getting it prepared for the third act requires us to transition. And you saw the essentials toolkit ad just now. 
Connections 50 Plus is here to help you do the transitions. But the, just the word transition speaks to the challenge involved. You have to move from one to the other. So a big part of being in tune often requires us to step out of something that's familiar, to go into something that's desirable, but unknown. And that whole leaving your comfort zone could be so traumatic. And many of us, many of us, for all kinds of reasons, really keep ourselves, our little karma, out of sync and out of balance because we don't yield. We don't allow ourselves to leave something that's familiar and known. And, you know, we want to tell you that you can't be afraid. One of the things that we are sure our cohort knows to do and how to do is to adapt, to change. We've been parents. We've been, we will be our parents. We've been employees. We may have been employers. We've run households. We've seen economies change. We've seen stuff. But somehow, when we come to this stage in life and we have to personally go through the transition, that fear of leaving what we're familiar with, whether it gave us status, whether it gave us financial security, whether it was a relationship, whether it was a, a business partner, whether it was a community that a group of friends that we were, or people we were accustomed to. Just the thought of going into something different, going into something unknown, that's the thing that causes us to freeze out of fear. And, you know, I was reading um, some stuff about what really is fear. Fear is just the failure or the, 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 the unwillingness to embrace something that is unfamiliar or you feel you have no power over. But what I want to focus on today in Living in Tune is to tell you that don't be afraid. Transition is necessary. Whether you, you believe, remember fear comes from what's in your mind. You may believe you may lose status. You may believe you may lose money. But that belief is really lack of knowledge. You just don't have something to compare it to. And what I want to do um, to show you that leaving your comfort zone is doable, I want to bring back on Yolan, who we spoke to earlier. And I want to show the other side of that discussion because it was clear that Yolan had to deal with some serious issues where her financial well-being was concerned but in her life she had to leave something that was was known to her that defined her that she was proud of and she had to emerge into something new and unknown and let's hear about that experience and I'm doing this in the hope that many of you who are holding back from tuning yourself and embracing something new and something different, something that you think is very risky, we'll get some inspiration, some excitement, a little mojo juice to take that leap and go forward and break out of your comfort zone. So let's talk with Yolan again. So Yolan, I have brought you back on because okay. we, we, we are now in the being in tune okay. and the topic we're talking about today is coming out of your comfort zone last okay. week we talked to uh, a guest who talked about the importance of space and what we find is one of the things that really stop our cohort you see we're 50 to 80 <laughs> the experience 
and they haven't been there and they've been the wise ones, yeah. it keeps us back. And you said two things that really gave an example of coming out of your comfort zone, not to survive, but to be happy. Yeah. Um, one of them was about changing your position from being the person who helps to the one who receives. Oh, for sure. Yes. What was your mental, the mental gymnastics that you would have gone through to make that transition and come out okay? I ask because I want people to be reassured that you can come out and be okay. Yes. Um, what happened to me was, which was strange, one of the persons who was my who was blessing me, say, so to speak, yes. was yes. someone whom I had to bless before. Yes. <laughs> All right. So it was like a turn around, like an inverse. You, yes. you understand? Yes. yes. And she was able to say to me, listen, that is how it works sometimes in the universe. Mm -hmm. Stop, breathe, understand that what you did for me before this is just payback, right? Because that is how it works. Some people call it karma and some yeah. people call it God. I call it God. I call it a blessing. So in getting a stern speech, a buff, a buff, a buff, a buff, a tanti buff, <laughs> a tanti buff, uh -huh. I was able to sit and be introspective and accept it. You understand? And yeah. um, I, I, I called back and said, yes, thank you very much and stuff. Great. But it really took some um, rethinking. Yes. It took some crying. Uh, I'm yes. not lying to tell you. It took Me. some crying to say to myself, you know, this is where you reach. Yeah. You know, yeah. China, this is where you reach. But understanding that I had persons for whom I was responsible and mm -hmm. I'm responsible. And then for myself, Yes. And where I, I mean, I still had a lot of life in me and I wasn't prepared to give up. So then, okay. All right. That's important. Well, recognizing the life in you. And the yes. second thing that you said, where you put yourself to be in service of someone else. You said someone had to go on a trip. They needed yes. a companion. So yes. you were tagging along. Yes. <laughs> and you I were... That's a was a law firm. Yeah. And what was this? Yeah, a friend yeah. for hire? Were you a yes. friend for hire? <laughs> you now, know, but mm -hmm. this is this is what it, it turned out to be. Because the person, um, it was a long journey across yes. the oceans um, to the east, and they didn't wish to do it alone. They were being mm -hmm. said that they didn't wish to do it alone. And they found a way to have me included. Yeah. I paid for and I I went along as, as the company because there was a fear on that side and I was able they were comfortable with me and I was able to fulfill that need. I as a companion, I never saw myself in that role before. And again, I'm, what what would have been the emotion that you would have had to get over? And I know shame and pride are parts of that moving out of your comfort zone. They are companions. Story. Yes, they are they are companions. You have no status. Yes, <laughs> yes you have no status status you are nobody you're just there on the side when i went i wasn't even registered as one of the participants of the you know but i went along just being there and being faced with them um, and who are you <laughs> and how did you how did you adjust how did you make yourself have fun and enjoy it was it an enjoyable experience it was an enjoyable experience uh -huh. i have learned i um i suppose growing up how i grew up you know um, in my family, um, my father always said, you know, we have to be strong women, independent women. Yeah. And so I just pulled myself out and I decided I would walk. I would walk around. I would talk, you know, try to enjoy uh, me, enjoy the, the what, what you call it, the social experience, the experience. cultural experience. Do different and things, at the you know? end of it, you had, you discovered something new about yourself. I discovered that I could survive with little. I discovered that I could go somewhere where I was not on a journey, a lengthy journey. It was about two weeks where I was not in charge. 
Ah. And that, because I came out of managerial position. You understand? I came out of middle management. So I wasn't in charge. <laughs> now, you know, I love that statement because when we talk about being in tune, getting yourself accustomed to a different stage, which is what we are doing on our third act. We are building this new stage and we yeah. are writing the script. So yeah. we tell our followers that what you were doing on that second act has nothing to do with what you may be doing in the third That's act. True. You're yeah. creating something new. And yeah. that process of writing the script, building the stage, and Jesus Christ climbing up on the stage could be like birthing. We, we are brothers. Yes. Yes. And it's stressful. It is. And I think that's the epitome, epitome of coming out of your comfort zone. But yeah. like now, men, you all have the same thing when you're looking at your partners, whether it's a birth of a baby or a new project or a new car or your yeah. favorite sports team going yeah. into a final. Everybody yeah. knows the trauma. But it's we, we have to not be afraid of the trauma. And Yolan, would you agree that that coming out of your comfort zone, the trauma associated with it, which stops people from changing, is yeah. lost the status, pride. Paralyzing, it's paralyzing. Wanting to be as you were before, uncertain mm -hmm. about how others may see me, we'll see you. how you want, to you want to still project the old, and you're stopping mm -hmm. the new from flourishing and coming out. Yeah. Because the fear is of no longer being relevant. The fear is of no longer being relevant. So when I stepped out of that there, and then I continued moving on, and I sometimes met others with whom I was involved. When I say on in corporate Trinidad and Tobago, Old associates, I'm, yes, old, old associates. associates. <laughs> those with whom I went to university, those with whom I, you know, I would have been to conferences with and all that. Like, what are you doing now? Where are you? Oh, okay. <laughs> shame, shame, for shame. You know, but I, I, I pressed. Yes. And as I said in in um, my last segment, um, my faith in God, my spirituality, and my focus in finding who I am. You yes. see, because I had to find Yolan. Yolan wasn't a manager at. Yolan isn't a wife or Yolan isn't Yolan is Yolan. Yes. Listen, that point, and we, we make that point. And it, I mean, we are, human beings are such finely tuned instruments. And, you know, we say you are not what you did before. You are mm -hmm. not the job. You're not the yes. title. Yes. And moving into this stage of life, you must release, as Jennifer often says, if yeah. you want to be in tune in this yes. new stage, yes. drop the titles, go yes. back to who you are, call your name, look in the mirror and say, yes. who yes. are you? Yes. <laughs> and yes. don't be ashamed. Yes. I, I just think, Yolanda, that you are such a beautiful example of what coming in, getting into, uh, coming out of your comfort zone is all yes. about. And, and yeah. it often is associated with traumatic, traumatic events. Events, yes. For you, it would have been divorce, it would have been loss of job, it would have been all kinds of things, and then getting into a new stage of life. But right now, how would you describe yourself? I'm doing great, you know? And like I said, when I tell people where I am, because let me tell you where I ended up. Mm -hmm. I ended up as an accountant of what in Trinidad and Tobago, would be termed a small church. <laughs> and when you are a big fish in a small pond. <laughs> so, so but you see, it, it allowed my allows me to mix my spirituality, my belief in God, my service to people. I mean it is the it is the ultimate. You understand? Plus be doing what I trained, what I was trained to do. Your, and your own skills. Yes, and when I go to, because you're still a business person, yes. so you get invited to certain things, like the banks may have things or something. And your you meet status is intact. Your status yes. is intact. Right? So you go and you meet your old associates, but when they ask you again, no, where are you? They're like confused. 
but I can say it with pride. And with, <laughs> you know, and you, you could see them step back because it's difficult for those in the corporate world. You it's that a it's a to understand that you have transition and I use that word guardedly, you know? Yeah. And they like, they think something is wrong with you, but they don't understand that you're good. <laughs> and I think, me. <laughs> yes, I think it is the, the, the essence of getting out of your old comfort zone yeah. and getting into a new comfort zone that really reflects who you are and what you do. And mm -hmm. I really and truly love your story as evidence to people that transition is not pretty. It's no. not easy. <laughs> But at the end, wow, look at joy, look at happiness. Yes, yes. <laughs> Yolan, thank you so much for oh, you're very give, welcome. giving a plus <laughs> to our audience on what being in tune and getting out of your comfort zone. It's a rough ride, but it yeah. ends up in a really happy place. It does. Thank you so much, Teria. Okay, great. Okay, Jennifer, isn't it amazing that one person yes. in, in, in one context could be seen in another and there was a happy ending. Yolan is not only money savvy, <laughs> an example yeah. of it, but she is well tuned to what makes her happy and who she wants to be. And that's the reality, yeah? That's reality of life. As long as you have that faith and we keep that goal in front of us. This is who we are. This is who we want to be. Definitely it will work out. I loved how she said, this is Yolanda. And she didn't bother with the yes. titles and the job. Yes. And the, it is who you are. So call your name. This is me. Yeah. And Jennifer, I think that is a great segue because when we go to our last segment, being in a tribe, the only person you can take into a tribe is you, you know. It's you, yeah. <laughs> so you better be. <laughs> so another guest another exciting time so let's deal with being in a tribe hi welcome again and we are in the community segment building community building a tribe we have this evening with us Anne Marie Edward Miharis and Anne Marie is here to chat with us about community Anne Marie is right now, she is mother, daughter, wife, and really enjoying her role. And I invited Anne Marie because, as I mentioned to Terry, and I always admire Anne Marie and her friends, what they do. For since I know Anne Marie, she has this group of friends and they seem to be always enjoying themselves doing different things. And now that we are building a tribe or 5.8 G, 50 to 80 generation. I thought it would be so nice to have Anne-Marie join us and tell us all about the joys of, of being in a tribe with having this group of friends where they can do so many things and you know give support to each other. So Anne-Marie, welcome to 5.8G Alive. So tell us, Anne-Marie. Tell us what it's like, your experience of having this group of friends of actually being in a tribe. Well, it has been a tremendous blessing in my life and in their lives too, because some of our friendships go way back to 12 years. Some of us went to wow. school together. Okay. And though we went apart, life took us on different pathways. We found our way back to each other. Mm -hmm. And that was because there was always a genuine love for each other. And I believe once you have that in a relationship, any relationship, it sustains. And um, we have a lot of common likes, you know, we share a lot of outings together. We share our tragedies. We share our, you know, victories. We share our children, grandchildren. We do a lot of stuff together. And um, we also come together for external, you know, we when we hear each any one of us will hear something with another person outside of our core group, you know, we gather and we seek to, you know, come together and find out how we could help. Because we are about that, we are about love, we are about sharing and caring. And 
you know, people may listen to this and say, it sounds perfect, but it's not perfect. We have our disagreements, but, a dis but disagreements with love, disagreements with respect. Because, you know, I often say if we are all happy and cherry all the time with each other, then that is not real, you know. But people have to be real, have to be themselves. Take off the, you know, they're still me using a lot more you know, the mask. Take off the facade and just be you. However you are designed, be you in the, in the relationship. No, one of the things, again, it continues on the theme that we are, we are having. And, you know, Anne-Marie, we... we one of the challenges we find with our 50 plus cohorts when Jen and I organize things, we talk to people, they find that it is so difficult to find like-minded people, find their friends, because yeah. so many of us define ourselves by, as we say, the second act, what we used to do. So the work friends and so on. You were chatting before and you said you are now happily a housewife <laughs> will you you gave yep. yourself several rules yes uh, how much how much have has have you leaving that previous life allowed you to be available to friends how has your life changed yeah well i was always available to friends let's start mm -hmm. from that um because i'm being i'm home it has afforded me the ability to be a little more attentive, you know. I haven't changed. I'm still the same. I'm, I'm more, but I have more time to be attentive, to really look at the personalities. And you know, my some of my friends will tell me, um, you know, you understand me, or you understand this, or you understand that. It's because I have the time to pay attention. But you know what? To we pay attention to what is important to us. That's just life. It has nothing really to do with, with time per se. It has to do with what you are willing to put into it. And whether you are uh, the chief executive officer, a stay-at-home mother, a gardener, it is something that you really like. It is somebody you really care about. You will find the time to pay attention. Yeah. And I think we use excuses sometimes. I'm not saying everybody, but sometimes we say, you know, we can't find people. So friendship is about focusing on the good and not focusing on the flaws mm -hmm. so you know and then we have to be intentional too sometimes we want friends but we're not making the effort mm -hmm. <laughs> you know we're not intentional because if you're intentional you will find a friend now you may find five friends and out of the five you may end up with really two genuine ones but that is also the cause mm -hmm. that is life and that's how i see it so be intentional about looking for friends don't say I can't find a friend. There is always somebody there to be a friend to you. And there are genuine people in the world still. I am not so callous to believe that they aren't. I live it. There are genuine people in the world still. Mm -hmm. And Marie, when you say be intentional about, I love that phrase because one of the things with defining this new stage and, and rebuilding life and, and getting it going is, People have to be intentional, but a lot of people either don't know what that means or they have different definitions of it. So as you exist with your group of friends, your tribe that you yes. share so much with, that you share your life with and so on, what are some of the things, the examples, the behaviors, the attitudes that you would ascribe to your being intentional about friendship and your friends being intentional about their friendship to you. But being intentional is, okay, you will get up in any one given day, you may not have heard from somebody in a while, even though they're your friend, or life gets going, and you, you, know, you think about them, you make it intentional. You stop what you're doing. You know, unless you're driving or something. Sometimes even if you're driving and you feel by the time you get to where you're going, it will come out of your head. You be intentional about that. You stop what you're doing. You get to that phone and you call that person and say, hey, I just thought about you. Yeah. You don't know what that has done for that other person. You don't know if you save them from something. And it may not even be your core group of friends. It may be somebody out there who needs to hear a caring voice. Be intentional. 
people don't come through our thoughts by accident. Yep. So let's be intentional about that. Get up every day and be intentional. Who can I reach out to today? Yeah. Who can I bless with a call today? Who can I call and say, how are you doing? How are you feeling? How is this treating you? How is the season we are in now treating you? How are you coping? Mm -hmm. You may not be able to help. You may not be a psychologist. You may not be able to give them financially, but just hearing that caring voice. That is one of the ways you could be intentional, right? One of the other ways is if you are, uh, if you are able to, and but now we have restriction, but if in the normal run of the mill, if you are able to, Take a drive and say, look, I came to see how you're doing. You know, people appreciate that. Sometimes some people are, you know, they may put you off by their attitude when you get there, but go past that because you don't know sometimes what they are going through. You know, sometimes we always take offense or we look at stuff on, from our point of view, mm -hmm. which is not bad, but sometimes you have to take yourself out of it and be intentional about seeing that person and wondering where, what is causing this without being too you know into their business you have to sit down and think how can yeah. i be of help here come back to the spirituality go to your father and say show me how to be of help to this person that's not being intentional too being intentional is just simply looking for ways to reach out to another human however it may be you know, however you can. And it is not always monetary. It is not, you know, always that way. It, it, it could be just a simple call. In our grouping, and I could share a little personal story quickly. Mm -hmm. Last year, 2020, a rough year for me, I had a whole year of eye surgery. So a whole year from January down to November. And um, because, well, my I have a strong family base, but that is my family. But you know, even though you have a strong family base, you need a strong friendship base. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. we have to be real. And they showed up, your man, it was just your man service. They, who, there are those who will call, there are those who will call me every minute, and there are those who can't deal with you every minute, but who will send me a, a word, send me a scripture, you know, financially. Whatever I needed, they were there. They were intentional to see me through. Even when they did not believe my faith walk, one of my friends said to me, I am believing with you because you are believing. Those are intentional things, you know, those are intentional things. And they walked me through and they buffered me through it. You know, they buffered my mother, my husband, my son through it. And that is what friendship does. It, 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 it eventually brings in the whole family. Mm -hmm. you know yeah. so mm -hmm. being intentional means making making the effort yes just a little effort it is it, it, no big maths in it and all of that it's just a simple effort you know mm -hmm. and people say sometimes i don't know what to say sometimes just listen that's all the person wants and Marie, i'm glad that you 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 said it because i think one of the and this is the theme that is running through our entire program today jennifer yeah. it is that part of this transition that we have to go through from this previous life to this other life is that we have to allow our expose ourselves we have to allow ourselves to be vulnerable and the the, the you know people will say yes you have to be intentional about it and sometimes we we use a word and people don't know what it means but I, I love the, 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 you gave a wonderful explanation of what community means. And it doesn't have to be, you know, the person for 10 or 15 years. Because I met the person last week. But Correct. it's just caring, reaching out. So if they pop into your mind and technology allows us to be so, what's up? Hi, how are you going? Or whatever it is. That makes people connected and therefore a part of a tribe. And it does so much to people. Isn't that it so bad? Yeah. And Amri, as Amri was speaking, what I love to, when I mentioned to her and asked her to be a guest, and I was telling her, you know, you don't know who's watching on. You know? No. You and I always admire you. As I said, I almost admi always admire your group. And what that has done to is, motiv is a, a motivational factor 
for others. Oh. So you are setting an example, your group setting an example for others who may want to say, okay, we can come together also. It's got to yeah. reach out. Look at it. They're happy. They're doing things together. So this is what we are all about and within building community. And at this time, during this pandemic and what you said there, reaching out is so important. You know, you yeah. have him there, you know? Yes. So yes, oh, yeah. we, we are on the definitely, you know, I must congratulate you and your group. Thank you Thank know, for sticking you. together and for so many years. Oh, and, yes. You know, it is such a great example of what as Terian mentioned, mm -hmm. what we see as community. Yeah. You know, yes. and community building. And so, I think that's I and think then, one of the things that that is clear, you know, there are some people, as you said, there are people who I have no friends. I, I don't yeah. know anyone. But then the and those people can always find one person by being intentional, reaching out. But uh -huh. the yes. tragedy is when yeah. we start off with friends and people that we know and we are careless and unintentional. And we That's just right. take the effort to reach out, to say right. and strengthen those bonds of community. And you don't have to do it every day. You can do it no, once again. You day. don't. Yeah. <laughs> you right. know? And people need to uh, people need to show uh, this season that we are in, this pandemic season has really, you know, highlighted how we have become so uncaring. Love is the key too. Love is the key too. Yep. You know, so that's just simple and basic how we do it as a tribe. I've never thought of it that way, but I like that. I like that. Yes. I like uh, that's knowledge. And I love the idea, Amri, that you all celebrate each other. You know, oh, that's, we do. that's very important. Yeah. We do. Okay. Sanri, really we want to thank you so much for coming on to our show 5.8 G Alive and sharing how important it is and how much fun it is also, you know, to have that core group of like-minded people really getting together, doing it, everything that you can think of, even in terms of worship. And that's fantastic. Yeah. You know, yes. so I wish you all the best at this time for the entire yeah. group. Thank you. Safe. Thank you. Stay safe. Right? Thank and you so much. All thank protocols are in place. Thank both of you so much. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity to share. Great. Yes. Okay, Anne Marie. Thank you. See you. And uh, enjoy your you. tribe. Continue to enjoy your tribe. Will do. Will do. Yes. Bye bye. Bye bye. Yes, Tarian, that conversation with Henry, you know, reinforced that how important it is for us to, to have a tribe, or at least as Henry said, at least have one friend, start with one, you know, it makes a difference. And I, during this time with the pandemic, where we are home, and Yolan even mentioned a bit about the, the isolation, and many people feel isolated at this time. So it is so important for us who are already in a tribe to reach out to those that we believe that um, don't have anyone. Pick up that phone, we cannot visit again. Pick up that phone and, and Terry and very early we mentioned that, make that call and reach out, start building that community. And one of the important things, intentionality. And even if you don't have a tribe, start building one. Reach yeah. out to somebody. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. a two-way street. It's a yeah. two-way street. <laughs> and our community page is still active. I would say we've had some beautiful feedback from you all. Some of you all have called. Oh, yes. And we definitely have some lineups of people coming on and talking mm -hmm. about their experience in community and moving forward. So keep on connecting, keep on connecting. So the invitation is open. Huh? <laughs> so let us know if you're interested in coming and chat with us on our show. All right. So take care.
50 plus tribe and follow us from Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean. Thank you for joining us on this Connections 50 plus 5.8G Alive show. We hope you enjoyed the lively conversation <laughs> and look forward to seeing you next week. Don't forget to like our Facebook page and subscribe to our YouTube channel. We really love getting your feedback. Bye, Bye for now. now.